one of the high school games with um, my crew and we were watching the game and we were so excited to finally get to high school. And I saw Coach Weedman coach his first game and he was sliding down the sidelines screaming uh, like a wild man. And I was like, yep, don't think I can play for that man. Um, but ended up falling in love with him. Uh, one of the best things that ever happened to play for a legendary coach um, like Coach Weedman. And I remember I was sitting on the bench as an eighth grader and he came down and called my name. And I don't, I can't remember if I was more scared to go in the game to play or if I was going to get screamed at. But, uh, but anyway, we both made it. So, so honored to have the opportunity to play for Coach Weedman, uh, Coach uh, Yan and Coach Evans, who is my heartbeat. Um, he made me, he helped make me the player um, that I am. So always much love to all my coaches um, at Odom County, you all really laid the foundation and prepared me to play um, at the University of Tennessee. So moving on to the University of Tennessee, I know people still give me a hard time to this day why I picked Tennessee over Kentucky. You know, I got the job at Kentucky and you would think I would get questions about Kentucky, but I got more questions about why I decided to play at the University of Tennessee. So if you don't know why I decided to play at the University of Tennessee, if you um, have followed anything about Coach Summit on the news, if you all have seen the stare, you would say yes to Coach Summit as well. So saying no to Coach Summit was not an option. Um, and I actually did uh, call her the night before I committed. Um, at that time, I was like, you know, I think I want to stay close to home um, and go to Western Kentucky. My family can get there faster. I can stay be with my friends that I went to high school. She played it real fast. She was like, sounds good. Um, I'll call you tomorrow morning. And I hung up the phone thinking, I'm about to commit to Western Kentucky University, but Coach Summit's going to call me back tomorrow morning. So I got off the phone. I was like, okay. So I waited to announce. My phone rang um, the next morning at 8 a.m. And it was Coach Summit. And she was screaming on the other end of the phone. And she said, I thought you wanted to be a champion. I thought you wanted to play for the best and be the best. So if that's the case, then I'll see you in Knoxville, Tennessee. And she hung up the phone. So therefore I called her back in about five minutes and I said, you know what coach, you are right. I will see you in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I ended up committed committing that day, and it was uh, the best decision that I have ever made in my life. Uh, when I went on my official visit to the University of Tennessee, if you know the Elsie family, there is a gang of us, and 22 Elsies went on my official visit with me uh, to the University of Tennessee. Now that I'm a coach, if any player decided to do that, I would probably strangle them because that's hard work, but Coach Summit welcomed us all and she wanted to know who was left in LaGrange, Kentucky, because all the Elsies um, were with me. So I had a lot of success at Tennessee. It came with ups and downs, but winning national championships um, is something that I will never forget and I will be able to hold uh, on for the rest of my life. Um, however, it was the work ethic and the mental toughness that Coach Summit has instilled in me. Um, and the definite dozen is something that she lived by and that I still live by um, today. And I preach to our players as well. And they are these simple rules. One, respect yourself and others. Two, take full responsibility. Three, develop and demonstrate loyalty. Four, learn to be a great communicator. And she was huge on that. Five, I stress this to my team now. Discipline yourself so no one else has to. Six, make hard work your passion. Seven, don't just work hard, work smart. Eight, put the team before yourself. Nine, make winning an attitude. 10, be a competitor. 11, change is a must. 12, Handle success like you handle failure. One piece of advice for me when I left uh, the University of Tennessee, 
that Coach Summit gave me on my way out before I got into my coaching career at Virginia Tech. Make hard work your passion. Passion. If you're going to do it, roll up your sleeves um, and go to work if you want to sustain in this business. Well, 20 years later, I guess her, guess her advice worked. I'm still here. Um, my coaching career has taken me to Virginia Tech, Kansas, Kentucky, Western Kentucky, Tennessee, and now back at the University of Kentucky as the interim head coach. Not like how I plan, but does life ever go like planned? Um, but right now, I'm living by the winning tools, honesty, hard work, discipline. I feel like if you use those tools, you can be successful on and off the court. Um, and that is what I'm living by today as we are trying to um, gather ourselves and uh, make a run uh, this season. I told the players we are ranked number nine. However, we will be humble. We will be hungry. We will continue to put our head down and grind and we will act like we've been here before. Uh, so that is the advice that I'm giving the team but I am so thankful for everybody in Odom County. I am proud to be an Odom County girl through and through and go cats for all the people on here that have on red, go cats. So thank you all so much. Um, I don't know if you all have any questions, uh, but one thing that I did wanna share, um, one of the ways I'm, we're, I'm really big on giving back and community service. So while I have you guys, I might as well uh, put my pitch out. So um, my goal that I'm working on for the last year or so, um, I want to start my own foundation and I want to uh, do it out of Odom County. So it will be called On the Five. Um, so five was my basketball number uh, growing up and uh, inspired by the train tracks that split our town in half, watching the train go by. Um, so wanna give uh, kids hope um, that whatever you would like to do, you can achieve success. So it's gonna be called On the Five. Um, it will be life skills through sports, uh, really want to target uh, sixth and seventh graders. Um, so that is, uh, where I will start. So when I start calling all of you wonderful people on the line today, um, that will be the foundation uh, that I hope to start in the next year or two. Kyra, great. That is unbelievable. Uh, please put my, I can give you my cell number right now. Okay. And, uh, all right. You ready? I'll give I'm it to ready. you right now. Area okay. code 502. Six four three five two zero zero, and sometimes, sometimes, Kyra, most of the members of Rotary, when there's separation, where we don't really get to see each other, obviously, it's a pleasure to see you, obviously, today for me. Um, but we develop other skills. I have the ability to raise money. Uh, you are my guy. I don't know if you've talked to anybody else, but I can. I'm not a licensed auctioneer, but when this COVID-19 opens up, I promise you, I will be willing to work with you to do uh, an auction because I can do it. And uh, so that's just one person among this group. We're all going to be able to step up and help you uh, with raising some money. So thank you. I'm going to take you up on the offer for the on the five. Okay. That is perfect. We have, um, one thing that, and we're going to get to some questions. I see several questions on our chat line. Uh, Kyra, one of the things I want to ask, if you recall this, if you want to share this moment, and, and Coach Weedman, can, uh, he may, I don't know if he remembers this or not. It was your senior year, I think, after that you came back, uh, Shamika, uh, she came back to the Oldham County gym. Oh. And you and her played two on two. Do you recall that moment? I do. Yeah. And you beat the socks them. off. You and Shmeek would beat them to death. Uh, I thought that was a great moment. Uh, just shows your talent. So let's get to some questions. Uh, let's see what we've got here. One of the questions, and it's um, Robin Lawson, uh, Kyra says, uh, what has been the hardest part of your transitioning from being an assistant coach 
to now being the head coach? Uh, great question. Um, I think the hardest part, uh, the basketball part is the fun part. Uh, when I get to get on the court with the players and actually coach and hang around them, um, I think it's the uh, expectation and standards off the court. A lot of speaking engagements, um, a lot of meetings, a lot, a lot, a lot of meetings. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I think the amount of decisions that you have to make and you have the final say, so you're not looking around suggesting things. Um, so I went from, oh, I think or suggest this to Coach Mitchell, and he makes the final decision to now everybody is suggesting and they are waiting for me um, to make the final decision. So a lot more decisions and sometimes, you know, having to make tough decisions and I've had to make tough decisions early that were not the most popular decisions, um, but they were the right decisions to make. Thank you. That's great. All right. Another question. This is from Billy Crouch. Uh, this is son, this little bill from you. I know, you know, again, you're from here. Yeah. You no, know you're from here. All right. Bill has a question since how do we match up with UT this year? Well, they better match up with us, right? There, I like it. They better match up with us. Well, you know, they're, they're very talented, but, uh, and so are we. But um, the thing that separates us from a lot of people right now, um, I am blessed to have the number one player in the country in Ryan Howard. So that does help me um, sleep at night. Um, but you know, we have a lot of talent and we are extremely uh, versatile and uh, gifted offensively where we have so many people that can score. So uh, it will be a dog fight every game in the SEC, but I'll take our chances. Like it. Okay, another question. Next question I have in the chat box is, uh, what is practice like, obviously in the COVID-19 environment and how um, do you interact with the team while also trying to teach and coach under these restrictions? Well, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, however, I think we have adjusted. Um, we've been back since June, so we get tested um, three times a week. So our players are not in mask. Um, the coaching staff is in mask at all times, as well as gloves. We have X's for social distancing across the baseline, across the sideline. So if you know a lot of women, they like to congregate together at all times, even in practice. So reminding them to space out. Um, just how we sit, our bench seating, if you've watched any games, we're socially distant. So I feel like the players are so far away from me. Um, even when they sit in the stools in front of me, they have to remind me to rotate how they sit. I would like the point guard in front of me with the guards on the right and the post on the left. However, after every time out, we have to rotate chairs so you're not next to the same person in 15 minute increments. So it is a lot um, to manage, but we just tell our players, we have to be resilient. We have to be able to uh, focus and we also have to make big sacrifices in order to play. Well, what a great win on Sunday. You came back and beat IU. Yes. Yeah, well, took care of that. That was, a, that was a great win for the program uh, from that standpoint. Um, so we now look here. We have a question from Mark Hartson. Um, oh, that's a different question. Uh, oh, yeah, I take it back. She, he says, what is the term of your interim status? And will you be a candidate for the permanent position? Yes. Uh, so, you know, the interim, it just happened so fast, um, just with Coach Mitchell going out and Mr. Barnhart and I did not have, we literally met about 20 minutes after the decision um, was made. And, and for comfort for both of us, we needed time to talk through to make sure uh, that we were on the same page and it was right for both of us. But um, I'm here to stay until he kicks me out. So um, I think we are, we're in good standings uh, over here at Kentucky. Great, great. Uh, Blaine, Blaine Anderson has a question. Uh, what changes, Kyra, have you had to make, um, again, with the, what we've been dealing with in 2020 and concerning recruiting? Uh, well, the biggest change is we have not been on the road. So normally right now we would be out watching games, um, doing home visits, 
um, in September, which you know we're not doing or having um, recruits on our campus. So it's dead right now through the final four, so through April. So we've really had to think outside the box. A lot of Zoom, Zoom, Zoom meetings, <laughs> a lot of virtual. Um, you know, basically we've had to learn how to bring Kentucky to them, the city, um, the campus, the players. Um, and so they can actually see um, because they're not going to be on the campus or we're not going to be out until April. So you have to be creative. Okay, great. Next question. This is going to be a tough question. I'm going to have to reword this because um, obviously we have a Hall of Fame coach on this Zoom meeting. And that's Coach Coach Weedman. Um, that is. I, I have the also uh, the connectivity. Again, if you're from here, you're from here. Dave, I uh, was uh, coached my wife. Um, and my wife played one of the many, many Prathers that came through the school system. So obviously, uh, when Julie played, Dave had that. So here's the question as, 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 as Dave is here, was Coach Weedman a good coach? Coach Weedman was an excellent coach. There's a reason why he is in the Hall of Fame, um, but his ability to uh, motivate, uh, connect, and make sure uh, that we needed to play, do what we needed to do to win, um, makes him an unbelievable coach. And he has coached some uh, great players that have went on to do amazing things. So that's why he can uh, take his time and retire and enjoy all the moments and memories that he has made. All right. I think I think with that moment, let's just show a pause for Coach Weedman as a Hall of Fame coach. Everybody, great job, absolutely. So, you know, one other thing um, is all right. Um, I'm looking. Um, okay, do we have any more questions? I'm still looking for some because we still got a few minutes. Um, Kyra, I want to touch on again about your family. Speak to if you would. I cannot believe Jackson is four years old. That is absolutely amazing how quickly time goes by. And most people maybe not even know who Jackson is, but I do. So if you want to talk about him for a little, and what lies ahead for him, having you as his mom, what a what an unbelievable challenge. Well, Jackson is my little boy. He is four. He is wild. Uh, <laughs> I can't decide right now. I think I have him very confused. <laughs> He can't decide if he wants to be a coach or a player. Sometimes he coaches, sometimes he plays. Um, he is real into basketball, which warms my heart. Um, obviously, uh, my husband wants him to play football because he played football at Murray State, but I am all about basketball. Um, so he goes back and forth. And then he is very confused um, about Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, you know, I've raised him when he sees orange, we say go Vols and Rocky Top when Kentucky's not playing. Uh, so a funny story we had, it was about a year and some change ago, we had the number one recruit in the country on campus and we were going to go to a volleyball game. And I had been running around all day and didn't realize we were playing Tennessee. So I, he came to the office and he likes to come help me recruit. We get to the gym, we're running around, we sit down, and he says right next to the number one recruit and her family, go balls! Epic fail, you know, epic fail. However, so uh, he does love Tennessee, he does love Kentucky, but if you ask him right now who his favorite team is, he will tell you um, Wildcats all the way. But if you ask him where he's going to play, He's gonna play basketball at Tennessee like mommy. So we're we're a little confused, but we'll we'll get it together. Go cats. Go cats. <laughs> All right, that's fantastic. All right. Uh, any more questions? Um, looking on the chat line. Blaine just makes a statement, Kyra. This is not necessarily a question, but just to mention we talk about your athletic ability, your athletic career. Yeah, go ahead. But you also accomplished while you were going to the University of Tennessee that you were the first, we believe, we think it's the first University of Tennessee player to graduate with your masters while you were still playing basketball. 
I mean, if anybody knows anything about college and, and athletics, that is amazing accomplishment. Uh, how difficult, just briefly, how difficult was that from the athletic side, mixing and matching with your requirements of going to class? Uh, well, thank you. Well, it is difficult for any uh, college athlete. What, one thing that you have to learn is time management. Um, so that that's extremely important. But um, once again, playing for Coach Summit, 100% graduation rate. So um, you were going to graduate if she had to drag you to class kicking and screaming. And if you know my family, uh, that was a must. That it was not even an option. That that was going to get done. So that was always a, a priority. So making it a priority and sticking with it. So and that's one thing we tell our players. We don't all like school. We love playing basketball. You don't all like school, but it is something that you must do. And life is going to make you do some things that you do not want to do. So that's where that's what sports teaches you. Hey, Mike. Go ahead, Tony. Look who we've got. Just want to tell her how proud of her we are, although she knows it, and keep grinding. And you know, we always have your back, whether you're at Western Tennessee, Timbuktu, we got your back. You know, I'm always ready to put on my blue and white. Go, Lady Cats. I love you. I'm proud of you. And keep grinding. And maybe one day Chan will play for UK. Yay, thank you. <laughs> I will say it's real hard for my family, you know. Uh, we are a house divided, so um, my athletic director did not understand when I told him that I grew, I grew up a U of L fan, and that I did not like Kentucky men's basketball, and he was totally confused. <laughs> I grew up loving Everett Sullivan and Purvis Ellison and Denny Crum, and he was highly confused by that. However, I did tell him uh, that John Wall. Uh, made me a Kentucky men's basketball yeah. fan. And he had to come through these office doors several times uh, to win me over. But from that point on, I became a Kentucky fan. So uh, it is hard for my family to put on a Kentucky shirt, but that's how much they love me, that they're willing to wear a Kentucky shirt, not red. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, that is so cool. Tyra, I've got one more question. I know we were earlier talking about, um, Blaine mentioned that Coach Cal might be recruiting you to slide over. Obviously, when teams have a major change of personnel, and I know on the women's side, I believe you had six transfers in from different schools. We see what's happening on the men's side. So when you have that influx of people that are transferring in from other programs, just real briefly, how do you, how quickly can you you get them to mix and match and blend together. Well, first, I want to say this about Coach Cal. You all do not have to worry. Coach Cal is an amazing coach. Um, I texted him last night. Uh, the, the ability that he has to bring that much talent and one and done and be able to get them to jail and perform when it counts, uh, you all, no need to worry. He will, he will figure it out along with the guys. Um, sometimes you go through tough stretches, and that's part of coaching. Um, obviously, we are spo spoiled with Kentucky uh, people accustomed to Kentucky winning at all times, but trust the process. And as far as transfers, you know, it's hard. You, you really have to uh, recruit the right player that fits your style for your coaching staff and fits the personality um, of your team. So doing a lot of homework beforehand before you bring them into the program. Great. Uh, we have a comment. This is another, not a question. This is <laughs> talking about Jackson. It says, hmm, why not bring him back to play for OCHS? <laughs> I might just have to do that. You never know. Yeah, that I is cool. Now, that, was from that. Bill, that was from Bill Crouch. So that was pretty cool. Um, guys, we've got just a couple of more minutes. Uh, anybody else have a question? Rosemary? Yes. Yeah. I would just like to know if she would share that list. I was trying to write it down as fast as she was talking. I'd like to share that with my grandsons. They're all athletic uh, athletes, and I'd like to uh, share that with them. Yes, you, the, I could email it to you guys. You want me to just email it to you? That'd be great. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. It's called The Definite Dozen by Coach Summit, but I will uh, email it to you. 
and Kyra, one thing I think I think I've got this right. I don't know if we mentioned this. Pan American Games. Yes. Yes. See, you did right. Yes. Gold I medal. The Junior Olympic team in 1997 <laughs> gold medal. That's all right. You See, go, again, girl. <laughs> if you're from here, you're from here. See, I I kept up great. Kyra, again, let me just finish. Is there any other questions? before we give her a great send off here. Today. You know, now what's the email, I'm sorry, what's the email address I'm sending? Send it to Al so he can send it to the club. Al early, Mike, okay. give her that address. Okay, we'll, Mike, get, we'll get it to you. Mike, this is Barb. Just ahead, real Barb. quick, I was Kyra's personal secretary her senior year and <laughs> uh, you know, when uh, I think some tickets need to be involved here because I probably got five, 10 calls a day, literally coaches saying, may we speak to Kyra, please? And I would be like, no, no she's in class. Well, wow. could you go get her out? No, I will not. <laughs> so, I, I think she could have went to any school she decided to pick. There were that many people looking for her. Well, thank you. And yes, tickets for everybody. If you all ever want to come to the game, just uh, email me or text <laughs> me. I would love to hook you guys up to have my Odom County crew here. Kyra, real quickly, if, if you Field click on the, chat, on the chat line, there's the email address. Okay. Can you do that? Do you have the access where you can uh, check? Yes, I do. Let me. Uh, yes, I have it. Okay, there's that email address. And while you're doing that, so let's, um, guys, let's do this real quick and we'll say our goodbyes. I mean, what a blessing uh, for LaGrange Rotary uh, today to have someone uh, like Kyra Elsey, who is, again, as she talked about her journey, shared some comments. We've all laughed and, and, and just memory. We went backwards on memory lane and talking about, but we as Oldham Countyans, we as LaGrange Rotary, and we have other members that are, I think, on our Zoom meeting today. I know Judge Vogel was here. I saw, of course, obviously many, many other people. Uh, we as, as Oldham Countyans could not ask for a better person. As a person, she's a tremendous athlete, tremendous coach. But with all of those things, I am a firm believer knowing her, watching her grow up, watching her family, she's even a better person. So with that being said, let's give her a great, thank you so much, Kyra. Thank, Thank you. you. Merry all. Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to you guys. Christmas. Hope to see you on some games. <laughs> all right. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. All right. We're going to finalize. We got the movie quote. So you got to get your fingers ready because I'm going to watch the chat box. So here's the movie quote for today. And, and a quick reminder, uh, Mark Hartson's at 930 to help load up the food. Next Tuesday, we're at uh, Crestwood Methodist to help South Oldham Rotary uh, separate the food. That's next week. Okay, this is perfect for Kyra. You have such a pretty face. You should be on a Christmas card. Bingo, Jane Ashley, Elf. That is it. Guys, be safe. Thanks for Coach Weedman being here. Everybody, what a great day, what a great moment. I'll guarantee you everybody's going to sleep better tonight. Bye-bye.